seen the stoke hole. In the rear, the dimly outlined bulks of the furnaces and boilers. High overhead one hanging electric bulb sheds just enough light through the murky air laden with coal dust to pile up masses of shadows everywhere. A line of men, stripped to the waist, is before the furnace doors. They bend over, looking neither to right nor left, handling their shovels as if they were part of their bodies, with a strange, awkward, swinging rhythm. They use the shovels to throw open the furnace doors. Then from these fiery round holes in the black a flood of terrific light and heat pours full upon the men who are outlined in silhouette in the crouching, in human attitudes of chained gorillas. The men shovel with a rhythmic motion, swinging is on a pivot from the coal which lies in heaps on the floor behind to hurl it into the flaming mouths before them. There is a tumult of noise, the brazen clang of the furnace doors as they are flung open or slammed shut, the grating, teeth-gritting grind of steel against steel, of crunching coal. This clash of sound stuns one's ears with its rending dissonance. But there is order in it, rhythm, a mechanical regulated recurrence, a tempo. And rising above all, making the air hum with the quiver of liberated energy, the roar of leaping flames in the furnaces, the monotonous throbbing beat of the engines. As the curtain rises, the furnace doors are shut. The men are taking a breathing spell. One or two are arranging the coal behind them, pulling it into more accessible heaps. The others can be dimly made out leaning on their shovels in relaxed attitudes of exhaustion. Patty, from somewhere in the line, plaintively. Yera, will this devil's own watch never end? Me back is broke. I'm destroyed entirely. Yank, from the center of the line, with exuberant scorn. Ah, you make me sick. Lie down and croak, why don't you? Always beefin, dat's you. Say, dis is a cinch. Dis was made for me. It's my meat, get me. A whistle is blown, a thin, shrill note from somewhere overhead in the darkness. Yank curses without resentment. Dear's de damn engineer Kraken de whip. He tinks we're loafin'. Patty, vindicatively. God stiffen him. Yank, in an exultant tone of command. Come on, use guys. Get into de game. She's gettin' hungry. Pile some grub in her. Throw it into her belly. Come on now, all of yous. Open her up. At this last all the men, who have followed his movements of getting into position, throw open their furnace doors with a deafening clang. The fiery light floods over their shoulders as they bend round for the coal. Rivulets of sooty sweat have traced maps on their backs. The enlarged muscles form bunches of highlight and shadow. Yank, chanting account as he shovels without seeming effort. One, two, three, his voice rising exultantly in the joy of battle. Dat's de stuff. Let her have it. All to get her now. Sling it into her. Let her ride. Shoot de piece now. Call de twine on her. Drive her into it. Feel her move. Watch her smoke. Speed, dat's her middle name. Give her coal, use guys. Coal, dat's her booze. Drink it up, baby. Let's see a sprint. Dig in and gain a lap. Dear she go, oh yes, this last in the chanting formula of the gallery gods at the six-day bike race. He slams his furnace door shut. The others do likewise with as much unison as their wearied bodies will permit. The effect is of one fiery eye after another being blotted out with a series of accompanying bangs. Patty, groaning. Knee back is broke. I'm bait out bait, there is a pause. Then the inexorable whistle sounds again from the dim regions above the electric light. There is a growl of cursing rage from all sides. Yank, shaking his fist upward, contemptuously. Take it easy, dear, you. Who dia tinks runnin' dis game, me or you? 
When I get ready, we move. Not before. When I get ready, get me. Voices, approvingly. That's the stuff. Yank Talim, P.Y. Golly. Yank ain't afeard. Good boy, Yank. Give him hell. Tell him he's a bloody swine. Bloody slave driver. Yank, contemptuously. He ain't got no noive. He's yellow, get me? All de engineers is yellow. Day got streaks a mile wide. Ah, to hell with him. Let's move, use guys. We had a rest. Come on, she needs it. Give her pep. It ain't for him. Him and his whistle, they don't belong. But we belong, see. We got her feed de baby. Come on. He turns and flings his furnace door open. They all follow his lead. At this instant the second and fourth engineers enter from the darkness on the left with Mildred between them. She starts, turns paler, her pose is crumbling, she shivers with fright in spite of the blazing heat, but forces herself to leave the engineers and take a few steps nearer the men. She is right behind Yank. All this happens quickly while the men have their backs turned. Yank, come on, use guys. He is turning to get coal when the whistle sounds again in a peremptory, irritating note. This drives Yank into a sudden fury. While the other men have turned full around and stopped dumbfounded by the spectacle of Mildred standing there in her white dress, Yank does not turn far enough to see her. Besides, his head is thrown back, he blinks upward through the murk trying to find the owner of the whistle, he brandishes his shovel murderously over his head in one hand, pounding on his chest, gorilla-like, with the other, shouting toin off dat whistle. Come down out a deer, ya yellow, brass-buttoned, Belfast bum, ya. Come down and I'll knock your brains out. Ya lousy, stinkin', yellow mud of a Catholic moiterin' bastard. Come down and I'll water ya. Pullin' dat whistle on me, huh? I'll show ya. I'll crash your skull in. I'll drive your teeth down your throat. I'll slam your nose through the back of your head. I'll cut your guts out for a nickel, you lousy boob, you dirty, crummy, muck-eaten son of a. Suddenly he becomes conscious of all the other men staring at something directly behind his back. He whirls defensively with a snarling, murderous growl, crouching to spring, his lips drawn back over his teeth his small eyes gleaming ferociously. He sees Mildred, like a white apparition in the full light from the open furnace doors. He glares into her eyes, turned to stone. As for her, during his speech she has listened, paralyzed with horror, terror, her whole personality crushed, beaten in, collapsed, by the terrific impact of this unknown, abysmal brutality, naked and shameless. As she looks at his gorilla face, as his eyes bore into hers, she utters a low, choking cry and shrinks away from him, putting both hands up before her eyes to shut out the sight of his face, to protect her own. This startles Yank to a reaction. His mouth falls open, his eyes grow bewildered. Mildred, about to faint to the engineers, who now have her one by each arm, whimperingly. Take me away. Oh, the filthy beast. She faints. They carry her quickly back disappearing in the darkness at the left, rear. An iron door clangs shut. Rage and bewildered fury rush back on Yank. He feels himself insulted in some unknown fashion in the very heart of his pride. He roars God damn ya! And hurls his shovel after them at the door which has just closed. It hits the steel bulkhead with a clang and falls clattering on the steel floor. From overhead the whistle sounds again in a long, angry, insistent command. Curtain